Okay, so let's go back to, or let's get back into the phylum periphera sponges. This is part two. Uh, as we were discussing in the first lecture, or the first part, they're animals, they lack true symmetry, they lack this true tissue because of what you can do with them. Um, again, amazing animals. You know, we don't see other animals that can do these features. Uh, will they stay in the animal kingdom? Well, who knows? Depends on what molecular data does. But what we do want to talk about is we're left off with the reproduction. Asexual reproduction is through fragmentation. You know, something rips them apart, whether it's a storm or a boat propeller or a predator like a turtle. And those little fragments go floating away. They settle down on a hard substrate and they can regenerate themselves. That's the amazing thing about sponges. Uh, let me show you guys a little video here of the sponge spawning. Get this bigger. And you guys can see what it looks like when this is a barrel sponge in Marathon, Florida, when it is spawning. So there's your barrel sponge. Looks like a big barrel. And that guy's releasing sperm. It's just this cloud of smoke what appears to be smoke going up into the water column. Billions and billions of sperm. Those larger chunks there, those are the eggs. So you notice they're different sponges. They time the release. Eggs come out, sperm come out. They get fertilized, they develop into little larvae, and then they move. Usually the ocean current carries them around, but they can do a little swimming. Because remember, a feature of animals is that they can move at some point in their life. Oh, get that out. So the what will happen here is egg and sperm combine. There's supposed to be our egg, sperm, give it a little helmet. They combine, they form the zygote. Zygote develops into the larva. Larva's got little cilia on it. Little cilia can help it swim around a little bit. It's not like it's swimming miles and miles. It's usually drifting in the ocean current, and then it settles down on some kind of hard substrate, and it starts to divide and grow, and eventually you get your new sponge from that zygote. All right, so now as it's growing, what we will see is sponges, the cells will differentiate and turn into different tissues. So they're going to become a certain tissue, or a certain cell type, I'm sorry, not true tissues, but a cell type. What we wanna talk a little bit about are the key characteristic cells associated with the sponge. So some of the cell types I want you guys to be comfortable with. The amoebocyte. Okay, so that cell type is going to be able to move around the sponge. It's a mobile cell. It can actually move within the body of the sponge. Um, some of the other cell types will form the epithelial wall. There will be cell types that form into fiber. That's the sponge and fiber. Um, another key cell type is called the spicule. These are gonna be little protein skeletons. Um, kind of look like little jacks. If you guys have ever played jacks. Some spicules have three prongs, others have four. The, one of the ways of identifying sponges, molecular data is definitely becoming much more popular, but an early method of defining or identifying sponges was by the prongs on the spicules. So you had to dissect the sponge, pull it apart, look at these spicules, and see how many prongs they have. Spicules are protein-based, let's see if I can write this out here, protein-based structures. They're hard, they're rigid, they give the sponge some integrity, some structure and durability. Um, not, they're definitely not bones, but they're going to do a similar job as a bone would. So analogous to bones, structural support, some protection. So certain things bite into that sponge. They hit those spicules. They may go, oh, this hurts. I'm not going to keep eating them and leave the sponge alone. 
Uh, so spicula is playing an important role in protection and support of the sponge itself. Um, protein, a lot of calcium carbonate embedded into that as well. Uh, the, but the most important, let me put the red star next to this, the most important cell in the sponge is a cell called the coanocyte. So that coanocyte, we also call them collared cells, another general term for it. Coanocyte is what links the sponge back to the coanoflagellates. So let me zoom back here for just a brief moment. Remember this group over here? This group here, coanoflagellates. Let me zoom in and move it over. Oh. Okay, coanoflagellates over here. Remember that group? Look at those guys. Now imagine a whole bunch of them getting together and working as a team creating a big line of cells they pop in a new slide here get my pen out and what we're going to look for here is a whole bunch of these coenoflagellates with these little collars here and these little flagella put another one collar flagella put another one collar flagella put some skin here skin here Oop. collar flagella flagella okay and then you got these little holes or pores in the side of the sponge's body so what's going to happen when these little flagella start whipping their tails they're going to push water up and out as water goes up and out that creates a draft or a current to suck water in so you push water out of the body of the sponge it creates in a sense a vacuum water will naturally flow into the body of sponge that body of the sponge and if there happens to be some plankton in that water or any type of algae or bacteria or something as it comes in it passes through here the little collars capture or collect all the plankton and remember back here the amoeba site well what's going to happen next is the amoeba site is going to ooze over here grab a hold of that little piece of food and carry it around the body of the sponge digest it, break it down, allow the nutrients to diffuse to other cells within the sponge's body. So the coanocyte is the characteristic cell type that kind of defines sponges. Um, again, we use amoebocytes and spicules and all sorts of other cells to help with identification, but kind of the defining feature, physical characteristic or feature of the sponges will be those coanocytes. So definitely, Underline that, highlight it, remember coanocytes. Very, very important characteristic of the sponge. So, all right, uh, general picture for you guys. Um, oh, one other term to mention, could have put it back here. The opening that the water exits, this is what we call the oculum. So water comes in through the pores right there and it exits if i can spell this correctly it's a five-year-old on red bull here um the oculum as water gets pushed out the opening so it's a one directional flow we don't see water coming in the oculum and going out the pores because of the beating of the collar cells the little flagella water moves in that direction all right so you ever have the opportunity to to go snorkeling or diving or swimming with sponges check them out they're really cool look down inside of them it's really cool a lot of times you'll see fish living in there certain fish use sponges as uh, cleaning stations 
where they say, hey, they're hanging out, they're uh, advertising that they're a cleaner fish. Uh, invertebrates like brittle stars and different urchins will actually live inside the sponges. So when we get to that group, we'll come back and talk a little bit about sponges again and the relationship, how these two things work together. One provides habitat, the other one gets food. So there's a lot of this going on in the aquatic world. Um, a lot of the phylum we go, we go through and we cover at the beginning here are going to be aquatic-based phylum. Life originated in the oceans, it evolved there, it diversified there millions and millions of years before it ever made its way onto land, which is why we have such a great diversity of life in the oceans. Um, and what's really amazing is a lot of it hasn't evolved significantly in millions of years because the oceans have been pretty stable across the existence of our planet. So, all right, so enough about phylum periphera. A very cool phylum to begin with, the simplest of animals. We'll move into our next phylum with the next set of lectures. That will be phylum Nidaria. These are some really fun ones to talk about. Uh, some of you guys may have experience with them. And we'll talk about the pee on your friend myth if you get stung by a jellyfish as we go into Nidarians. All right, see you at Nidarians.